Kigali's new innovation city. Supporting the development of mixed-use smart innovation hub in Rwanda. The innovation city is a growing tech hub that will be home to Africa, large corporation and technology companies. Its goal is to drive Rwanda's economy growth through digital transformation. With strong support from the government of Rwanda and Africa 50, it's at the core of Rwanda's vision to become a pan-African hub for tech and innovation. The project is joint venture to develop and co-finance with private sector investors. This project is known as KIC, Kigali Innovation City, and it's building a supportive and connected ecosystem with a concentrated of game-changing startups, innovative companies, financial investors, academia, and support services that facilitate the creation and commercialization of new ideas. The KIC is developing a 61.9 hectare mixed-use development that integrates universities, offices, residential housing, retail facilities, and hotel in a smart and environmentally conscious manner. This city will provide supportive and accessibility innovation infrastructure, including an incubator and office space, for technological firms across various stages of growth within the special economic zone, providing additional opportunities for synergy in IoT technology. A community of four world-class learning institutions is core to Kigali Innovation City because local universities and research organizations play a key role in building the technology ecosystem by providing access to highly skilled and diverse talents from across Africa. These institutions provide a pipeline of talent as well as an entrepreneurial venture for ecosystem to support and celebrate the digital economy, including various digital transformation efforts. These are being carried out by the government and private sector, co-locating academia, government institute, tech, and tech-enabled companies of all sizes. Private sector and entrepreneurs will not only enhance formal and informal network in order to build community, but also to collaborate across different actors including knowledge and tech transform from international territory institute and companies. Carnegie Mellon University, Africa will sit atop a 6,000 square meter and accommodate up to 300 graduate students. It has twice as many labs as its previous location, more specialized and inclusive facilities, and modern technology to enable distant education and, tele and teleconferencing. Students, faculty, and staff at the institution enjoy spacious office, classrooms, as well as an outdoor amphitheater to host graduation and social events. Carnegie Mellon University is the first center of excellence to be located in Kigali Innovation City whose goal is to drive Rwanda's economy growth through a digital transformation, with a major focus on continent emerging knowledge-based ecosystem. This is quite an incredible step for Rwanda. They want to focus on the knowledge-based economy. Graduate programs are educating future leaders, and these are future leaders in all sectors throughout Rwanda, throughout Africa. It is no surprise that what Rwanda has been able to create is nothing short of exceptionally amazing. The people of Rwanda have been able to create one of the most beautiful cities and one of the most beautiful countries in Africa. And they have plans to thrive for even more. So the university program, Educating Future Leaders, it goes beyond that. There is exceptional learning to advance technology innovation and grow the businesses across Rwanda and Africa that will transform the entire continent. The city is set to be a home for large corporation technology companies. So the university placement is actually strategically made as it provides students the opportunity to interact directly with these industries around them. So if you're going to university for technology education, then your, your environment will thrive on that. Because close to your university, you will have many different technology-based companies, many to choose from, many to interact with. Perhaps you can start having networking even before you've left university. And this is ultimately where Rwanda will win out. Rwanda has big plans to build its economy for innovation, for building its ecosystem of innovation. Rwanda's planning and policy blueprint vision for 2050. 
Rwandans are showing no shortage of global ambition. So the country is committed not just to reducing poverty, but to increase the income and opportunities that there are for their citizens and achieving upper middle class status by 2035 and high income status by 2050. So what does this mean? Well, in 2021, Rwanda's GDP per capita was actually $851 approximately. The country is aiming to raise this by over 4,000 by 2035. It is projected that by 2050, the country could have approximately raised this by over 12,000. And let's be honest, with everything that Rwanda has been doing thus far, this is actually quite modest. There is a chance that Rwanda will do even better than these statistics are aiming. And that is the gold, is when you set your own statistics, your own aim, your own objective, you want to exceed expectations. And this is the philosophy that Rwanda is thriving on. A very similar philosophy that is shared with economies such as Singapore, Hong Kong. These economies, they thrive on, let's do better than we expect we could do. Let's set the target high and let's try to accomplish beyond that. Let's try to do even better. Let's try to surprise ourselves. So it wouldn't be surprising to me if by 2035, Rwanda's GDP per capita was actually somewhere between five to 6,000. In this digital age where digital nomads are taking over the economy, where you can learn skills online, where you can make a living online halfway across the world, networking with clients in various different areas, the innovation has actually already taken place within people own home. They're actively taking up entrepreneurship. These innovation cities by Rwanda, these are simply a way to further that. The government are supporting this. They want this to thrive. They want the country to thrive. If the people thrive, the country will thrive. They also want to make an environment in which people feel safe. People feel like, okay, I've invested my life in Rwanda and now that I've accomplished what I want to accomplish, I don't want to leave Rwanda, I want to stay within Rwanda. I want to continue driving this economy to great heights. Now if the minimum wage continues to rise, people continue to thrive to get better opportunities, better job, bring better income to the country, there's a few areas where the government will need to have high focus on. One, keeping the cost of living low. Two, keeping inflation low. Three, keeping the housing market more affordable. There is one economy around the world who's been a great example of this. It is actually Japan. Japan is a country that has actually seen negative inflation. Because the country and the people have done so well in thriving for excellence, the country has actually done better than its counterparts by a significant feat. And due to this, Japan has long been a pursuer of inflation growth rather than negative inflation growth. While this might sound confusing, why would a country want their inflation to grow? Because when the inflation grows, the economy businesses has a reason to rise prices and make more profit. And this is what happens in most economy. Often this is why the price of living continues to go up and it sometimes exceeds people's expectations. It's too much. So if Rwanda can find a way to manage this very carefully, similar to how Japan has managed their economy, all while innovating and thriving for excellence in business, similar to Singapore, Rwanda up until 2050, 2100, will perhaps be the most innovative place in Africa. Now Rwanda is investing in this quite early on. And the important thing is that when you invest in something early on, that investment, if you continue to invest in it continuously, it will eventually pay dividends. It will eventually become an economy that works on itself. It thrives on itself. It's like a living ecosystem that is unstoppable in the pursuit of bettering itself. These economies are, of course, very rare. But you can find such economy in Hong Kong, Singapore, Japan. And taking a look at what Rwanda has been able to, to accomplish over the last 30 years is nothing short of incredible. Give them another 30 years and imagine what they will accomplish. By that time, it will be past 2050, perhaps 2055 or 2056. By that time, imagine where Rwanda will be. And like I said, 12,000 GDP per capita is actually more modest. Long term, I see Rwanda crossing up to 20, perhaps 25 by that point. 
that's 20,000 GDP per capita, which is almost like twice as much as their estimate. And why do I think this? Because at the moment, what Rwanda is doing is for Rwandans. But as the economy drive, people are moving to Rwanda for the safety, the job opportunity, the innovation opportunity. It's becoming a place where talent thrives. It's becoming the business hub of Africa. Yes, you are very safe in Rwanda. You will feel at home with your fellow Africans. It's very welcoming. It's very pleasant. Rwanda is becoming that place very slowly. It's an economy that's not just relying on Rwandans to do the job. Rwandans are building these educational cities to innovate and educate its people, to advance its people. But what you need to pay keen attention to is the people that will come into Rwanda to help the economy thrive. And this is why I believe Rwanda will do even better than the estimates. They're on a journey to be counted as amongst the 10 most competitive economies in the world. According to the Ministry of Finance and Economy Planning, Vision 2050, Rwanda has few secret weapons. The first is pro-business environment that is created and nurtured by the Rwandan government, one that encourages collaboration via policies that are transparent and diverse, compliant and competitive. Another, 70% of its population is under 30 years old, but youth alone is no guarantee of success, of course. That is, 70% of its population is under 30 years old. For Rwanda to reap the economy benefits of its demographics division, it requires an integrated approach backed by investments in economy reform and in human capital development. Transforming the investment landscape for the financial sector, spearheaded by Kigali International Financial Center, is well underway. So the Kigali Innovation City is starting to make a lot more sense for their economy, their people, long term. Most of the greatest mind of our time will continuously agree that the best investment you can make is often in yourself. That is what Rwanda is doing, innovating and investing in itself. And everything that Rwanda is doing today, they didn't start it today. They started it a long time ago. These were plans and ideas that are starting to take shape and form, set in stone. Another positive to look at is how will this influence Rwanda's neighbors? You can certainly see how the economy of Kenya, the economy of Tanzania is already thriving. And these are coastal countries as well, while Rwanda is more landlocked. Burundi, Uganda, they're more landlocked. And because they're landlocked, the innovation and education and development has to come from within. You do not have a port access to water. Due to that, you have to innovate in different areas. So Rwanda innovating in the space of agriculture is very important to their economy that they can feed the Rwandans people. Innovating in job creation, technology base, entrepreneurship. They won't just create talent, they will attract the best talent. So the Kigali Innovation City, costing roughly $2 billion in investment, the $300 million construction cost of Kigali Innovation City will start in September. This is following an agreement signed between the government of Rwanda and investors at the African Development Bank Group meeting in Nairobi. Africa 50, granted exclusive rights, will co-sponsor the project, investing up to $400 million, focusing on real estate. So this city is not just a place for universities, innovative businesses, but also housing, incubators, retail spaces, expected, in, expected to create up to 50,000 jobs. 150 million in annual ICT exports and attracting 300 million in foreign direct invest. So this project is not just a project, it is an actual city that is being created. And that for many is a bright look of the future for Rwanda and Africans alike. So I would like to hear from you. What do you think about this project? Hope you enjoyed this video. If you live in Rwanda, what do you think about what I've said so far? If you live in Africa and you're thinking about moving to Rwanda for the opportunities that might lie ahead, let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to see more. You can also subscribe to our newsletter. There's a link in the description below. And I will see you in our next video.